And joining us this week at the Roundish Table, former New South Wales Premier, now Head of Basketball Australia, Christina Keneally, and Tom Switzer, Research Associate at the United States Study Centre at the University of Sydney. Welcome to you both. Thank John. you. John. Christina, first, how's this that they talk about? How's this going to play in Peoria? The attacks in, in Libya and Egypt this week. Is this 1979 and the Tehran embassy all over again? Could this have an electoral impact? Well, these things tend to favour the incumbent. That is, when a country's under attack, people tend to look to the incumbent leader. And, you know, we've seen that here in Australia uh, as well. Uh, and I think, unfortunately for Romney, he's got caught up in a bit of, uh, if you will, Twitter uh, trouble. Uh, he tweeted something or someone tweeted something and a statement was released and the attacks occurred and people aren't quite sure what his statement was relating to. And now it's, it's just not clear where... Yeah, he appears to be attacking the State Department, and it's all a bit unfortunate for him. Uh, and I think that's not going to play well for the challenger. It's sort of a golden rule in politics. If the country's under attack, don't attack your opponent. Was this bad timing from, from Romney? Well, I think Christina's right. It gets down to this relentless 24-7 media cycle. And I think we should remember that timing is important. He originally came out and criticised the US Embassy statement the very statement that the Obama administration has subsequently distanced itself from. So I think we should bear that in mind before being too hard on Romney. I do agree that he appeared to jump from the gun and he seemed to reek of political opportunism and clearly he's been all over the place on this question. It uh, is important though to say that that, that statement from the, the, the embassy in Cairo was after the anti-film protest was happening but before there had been a violent attack and certainly before anyone mm. had been killed, much less an ambassador. So the, the timing in this is, is, is important. Yes, sure. But I think what did the damage for Romney was the very next day he came out and gave the press conference and reiterated that criticism. It mm. probably would have made more sense to be a bit cautious and prudent, uh, join forces with the president on these issues. I think that's where a lot of, politically speaking, where a lot of independence mm. would probably sit. Mm. Christina, obviously... At the moment, Romney's gained some bad press, but mm. once we get past the daily headlines, his overall narrative of weakness, the apology tour, all the rest of it, which is what he's trying to hammer as hard as he can, in a month's time, people might forget today's headlines. Oh, absolutely. But absolutely. Are they going to remember that narrative, and is that going to work? Uh, look, I doubt it. this election at the end of the day is still going to be about the economy and it's going to be Romney's narrative of the, the pa past three years, three and a half years have been terrible, four years have been terrible and it's going to be Obama's narrative of these people are going to uh, wreck the economy, they've had a chance to fix it in Congress, they haven't done it and you know, let me get on my program of, of change that I started in 2008. That's what it's going to come down to. What's happening here... Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a foreign policy mm. election. Yeah. Although it is isn't. quite striking that foreign policy has not been mentioned much at all in this campaign. Yeah. I mean, uh, Mitt Romney didn't even... Well, he dedicated one paragraph of a 40-minute speech to the Republican mm. convention to foreign policy. Didn't talk about Afghanistan at all. He didn't talk about Afghanistan at all. And indeed, his running mate, Paul Ryan, skipped the subject of foreign policy altogether. And presumably that goes to Christine's point. They'd have their internal polling. Absolutely. They'd be saying, don't go near there. No one cares. Mm. Yeah, so, this, this dismaying phenomenon mm. of focus group surveys mm. Mm. Uh, with politicians of all sides... <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of uh, kowtowing to. That's right. And I think all the available public polling evidence suggests that Americans are suffering from foreign policy but fatigue. Even if foreign policy isn't going to decide the issue, is there a sort of a threshold for any presidential candidate? Given that you, you will become the most powerful politician mm. on the planet, you will have a big say in who starts wars, who ends yeah. them. Is it still kind of in the back of people's minds when they're making that final decision of, you know, which hole to punch? Abs uh, look, you look at McCain after his convention and the announcement of Sarah Palin. He had a, ba he had a bounce... Uh, he was looking pretty good. Uh, and then Sarah Palin came out and said she could see Russia from her front yard and she <laughs> suggested she might attack it. And, and you know, that sense of mm. this person is a heartbeat away from the presidency, just amongst a few other things she said and did that were really stupid when it came to foreign policy and it demolished the credibility of that campaign. So it's a disqualifier more than a qualifier. Particularly yeah. in this election. Yeah. Uh, if, OK, so let's, let, so let's talk about the threshold question. Let's mm. actually look at the substance of what Mitt Romney's message was, ignoring the timing here and there. The, his broad point seemed to be that you have this ridiculous video, and it is ridiculous. I don't know if you've actually seen on YouTube, just typing Innocence Muslims, and, and it's their 13-minute trailer, and it would be hilarious if four people hadn't died mm. because of it, because yeah. it is so amateur, and, the, and this is just a nutter. On your mm. random nutter on YouTube, put a video up in June, mm. and three months later, people... Are, are killing each other over this video. Isn't, isn't Romney's point that, that you, you shouldn't be kowtowing to these kinds of people? Yeah. Isn't that correct? 
Well, look, it's, it's, a, it's a message that may well resonate with a significant segment of Americans. Mm. Uh, I think one should bear in mind that the, the overall uh, foreign policy critique of the Romney campaign mm. is that President Obama, his foreign policy is one of weakness and apology, but it's a very weak argument when you think about it. After all, it was President Obama that killed Osama bin Laden. He presided over the uh, significant uh, escalation of the drone strikes in Western Pakistan and Yemen. And, of course, Guantanamo Bay is still open, yeah. uh, much to the horror of Liberal Democrats. So it's a very weak argument. But on this specific issue, look, there is a point to be made. I mean, the essential trait of America is freedom of speech. And freedom of speech means the right to disagree and the right to offend. And the State Department's statement uh, did give the impression that it was more concerned about not upsetting the views of Muslim people outside the embassy. It's interesting. You, you were talking, Christina, about the, the role of, of social media and how the, 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 sort of the reaction first got out there and then Romney doubled down on it the, the next day and, and the speed at which you know, YouTube came into play in disseminating this and then the organising of the protests in both cities. And there was also yes. a really interesting exchange on yeah, Twitter. I've got a great one for you here. This is an exchange between the official account of the Islamic Brotherhood in Egypt and the embassy in Cairo. Mm. This is the, the two official accounts, OK? If we go to the laptop, the Islamic Brotherhood says, we are relieved none of the embassy's staff were harmed and hope US-Egypt relations will sustain turbulence of Tuesday's events. The US embassy replies directly to them, thanks. Mm. By the way, have you checked out your own Arabic feeds? <laughs> I hope you know we re read those too. <laughs> so they're actually fighting on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're picking on Mitt Romney here, but I think mm. the real culprit here is the Egyptian President Morsi. What was his original reaction to mm. the, uh, the protests? Certainly didn't condemn no. even didn't condemn. the killings. Right. If anything, he's called on them to have more protests. Mm. Now, meanwhile, he's receiving $2 billion in American aid. Mm. If Romney steps up this attack, you can see how this would register with a significant group of Americans in an election. Mm. Is this whole video just a stalking horse? I mean, it's happened on September 11. What a coincidence. Yeah. You've got all kinds of rumours about all kinds of fringe groups that tried to hijack the protests for their own ends. Mm. Mm. Is this actually not about the video at all, but just about anti-American sentiment in Libya mm. and Egypt? Uh, look, I think you've got to factor that in, and you've got to factor in, you're right, it's September 11. And those protests have gone for months as well, haven't That's they? right, the emotion of that yeah. week and yeah. the emotional sensitivity that Romney would have been feeling and Obama and every journalist and every American, I think mm. you can't ignore that dynamic yeah. here. One of the striking things about the Arab Spring early last year with the uh, downfall of Hosni Mubarak, there wasn't really any evidence of anti-Americanism on the streets. Yeah. And I think you could say the same thing for Tunisia and in Libya and other parts of the Middle East. So this is quite intriguing mm. that you've We've seen this resurgence of anti-Americanism, which does raise a question that this is all just a cloak and that it could be some sort of post-revolution jockeying among other Islamist groups. At the same time as all that was happening, there was the, the alleged snub of Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister. He's coming out to the UN in New York next week. He wanted a face-to-face -face meeting with President Obama and he was told the President may not have time. He's, he's got campaigning commitments. He's going to the UN himself. We, we may not be able to get you some face time, but you'll talk on the phone. Israel then came out and said, this is a snub. Critics on the Republican side said, this shows just how tenuous the relationship between these two men in particular is. Now, that has electoral implications mm. as well, because mm. a lot of people support Israel to a rather extreme extent. Mm. How could this play out, do you think, Christina? It is a snub, and, you know, I'm not in the business of giving political advice to American presidents, but if I were, after the, what they had at the convention was, you know, the, the platform, did it name Israel or Jerusalem as the capital of mm -hmm. Israel or not, and then Obama had to intervene, apparently, uh, to get that back in, not to mention all the hoo-ha about God and whether or not the Re Democrats had God in their platform. I, if I were Obama, I would have made tracks straight to meet with Netanyahu and just kill any of that lingering suspicion that people might have. Doug Fyth was saying there in the interview, Tom, that, uh, that in fact there is a difference between the two sides on foreign policy and Israel is one of the clearest examples of that. Do you buy that? Not really. I think that both sides of politics, although they won't say this publicly, I think they've learned the lesson of the Iraq war, which is that deterrence and containment can work against rogue regimes. I mean, the big issue here, of course, is how to deal with the Iranian nuclear facilities. And I think although they express themselves in different ways, Romney and Obama are essentially in agreement that they don't want another preemptive war in the Middle East. Uh, the Israelis, obviously, are taking the threat more seriously, uh, but they just want the American backing, which they will get. But in terms, from an American perspective, I don't think that either Romney or Obama are hankering for a preemptive strike against Iran. They'd rather have diplomacy work out, have the sanctions play. 
So well. finally, quick word from both of you. Is this going to have an impact on November's election or are we just going to be talking the economy and domestic politics next week? Oh, we're going to be back to the economy and domestic politics. Mm. The ad, the onslaught of ads is going to start and that will determine it. Well, I agree with some of what Christine said, but uh, <laughs> circumstances can change very quickly. Mm. It's a very volatile situation right now in the Middle East. Indeed. Tom Switzer, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Christine John. Keneally, thank, thank you as well. Thanks. And that is all the time we have for Planet America for this week. Next time, we will be looking at domestic politics. We'll take you to the crucial swing state of Ohio talking to the former Republican governor there, Bob Taft, about what Mitt Romney might need to do to win the state.